same old trouble Villains always knocking at the door Pretty pictures on the page But nothing ever stays the same Thank you, Vandello. Welcome to Graphically Novel. My name is Josh Wasta, a.k.a. Fallout Fieri. And with me, as always, is the bullets to my Ben. Burr. And with us today, we also have the lovely Baronessa. Hello. So, this is the second episode that you have come and joined us. We had 12 episodes. You chose six that you were going to take time out of your busy grad student life to come and join us. And Umbrella Academy is what we're doing today, a show that I know that we have watched all of the first season, and there aren't many shows that you will watch more than one episode of in a row. At a time. Yes. yes. It's true. We discussed on the Jessica Jones episode why we didn't just binge that, although it was great, but this is one of the ones when it's late at night and we really should be going to bed. One more. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. In a lot of ways, you are kind of the target audience for this because the idea of the show is if you like something in modern media, we want to introduce you to the graphic novel. And in that way, we picked up the graphic novel, both Bear and you have read it. I actually was the same way. I saw the show before I read the graphic novels. This is the first episode in which I didn't already read something that we're reviewing. We've done Ultimates and Avengers, and then we did Jessica Jones. And then last episode was Constantine, which I grew up with. And Bear has kind of been my guide to reading the comics for the first time. But this time, all three of us, all in agreement. So let's start with you, Bear. What did you think? Really, the two were very different. You can see the story elements in between them, but the graphic novel is more of an adventure than the TV series. TV series held to the your standard like modern TV series of let's get a little backstory, let's develop some characters, let's introduce things little by little, and the graphic novel really had like an old school video game kind of feel to it for me. Like, this is an adventure novel is what this is. Yeah, I really felt that the writers for the show used the graphic novel as a springboard and definitely filled in a lot of details. And the character development that they did in the TV show and the series was to its benefit. Reading the graphic novel, I felt like, did I miss something? Was there something I should have read before this? There's a lot of information that feels like the graphic novel assumes that you know something that probably don't. And I feel like the TV series did a really great job of filling in those blanks and shaping those characters for you. So you had sympathy for the characters. You understood why they made the decisions that they made. Definitely, yeah. And Understanding their motivations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you, and I felt like you didn't get that in the graphic novel. I felt like Vanya was a much fuller character in the series. In this one... There was nothing to like about her. In the series, she's indirectly the villain. She's really like a pawn in the game and causes the problems. So how much of that do we think is because top billing in this show went to Ellen Page? Ellen Page is the largest star in this show, and she plays Vanya. We're speculating, which is what we do here. How much of that do you think was changed once they landed Ellen Page, one of the biggest actresses in this? I don't, I don't think it was changed. I think that when the screenwriters used this as the source material, it's obvious that they wanted to create complete characters with depth. I think they may have spent more time on Vanya, but it was necessary for the storyline that was going on there. It didn't feel disingenuous, the attention on her character just because it was Ellen Page, I didn't get that feeling. In fact, I felt like she probably had as much screen time as a lot of the other yeah, it's pretty characters. Much everybody else. Yeah, and I also liked that there were characters number five. The graphic novel and the way number five is a big aspect because you, at that point, deal with time travel. Right. I felt the show gave credence to his return better than the graphic novel did. The show made it an event that he had been missing. It showed that people missed him, and it showed a lot of detail on the relationship there. In the graphic novel, and this will be a minor spoiler, so fast forward 20 seconds, in the graphic novel, he just pops back up. 
and there's no surprise. There's no, where have you been? What's going on? I mean, they get to that, but in the show, it was a huge deal. Yeah. Yeah. And whereas in the graphic novel, a lot of stuff was just points that you had in the series were kind of stuff that was glossed over in the graphic novel. It felt like a big short story. Totally agreed. Not to take anything away from it. I'm not saying it was bad. I'm just saying that this was here to tell a very specific story and just that and move on. There wasn't as much character development. There wasn't as much depth at all, even as far as the plot goes. It went from point A to point B. You had a fun time doing it, but... There was a lot more development, I think, in the series. Yeah, to the screenwriter's credit, I really feel like most of those points that they use to expand on the character came from the graphic novel. Oh, yeah, directly novel, from the graphic But they really did a much better job of taking that and really looking yeah, at it. Yeah, filling in for those of us that had no idea what was going on. <laughs> We're using the graphic novel of the Apocalypse Suite, which, by the way, Gerard Way... Gabriel Ba does the art for it, and it is a gorgeous graphic novel. Absolutely. The actual artistry of it reminded me a lot of Magnolia and his Hellboy stuff, which makes sense because it's Dark Horse, which is the same company. But a lot of details are fleshed out a lot more mm -hmm. in the series. And we talked about in the Avengers episode, in our first episode, about how... In the comic book, none of them are likable. I mean, oh, no. yeah. none of them are likable. And when you do a movie franchise or a TV series or something in the media, you have to get people to like who you're watching. I kind of felt that it was the same way here. You couldn't do this story, and you could, but... There is a significant portion of the viewing audience that has been following this person that will turn it off. In Umbrella Academy, there were points in the show where I liked Luther. I don't think I ever liked Luther in the comic. I disagree. There were points in the comic that I really enjoyed Luther because I really felt like Luther was more of the leader that they hinted at in the series. In the scenes from the comic, he really seemed like he had much more of a take charge attitude. And in the series, he, he always seemed a little hesitant. Yeah, a little hesitant, a little just you know, unsure of himself. But I feel like that's more of the character development because they didn't talk about any of the relationship between the quote unquote siblings of the Umbrella Academy that's fair, yeah. in the graphic novel. Right. You had no idea like what. You got a little bit of that, yeah. how some of them had resentment to Luther being the leader, especially from Diego. Diego. Yeah. That's the other thing, is Diego was very protective of Vanya mm -hmm. in the series. You got their relationship. You understood, right. especially in the first meeting, where right. obviously Ben and Five aren't there, but right. all of them are in the room, and you really get a feel for what their relationships are right off the bat. Right. I don't remember Diego really being protective of Vanya because he made a couple comments about the book that were very sarcastic and not really protective. Also true, he made them directly to her, and then there are comments that others make, and he, you can't mess with my pledges, only I can mess no, with my pledges, fair, like yeah. kind of. <laughs> well, and that's kind of Diego's MO. Yes. He may not like your, what something you're doing, but he's not going to talk to somebody else about it. He'll say it to you. That's fair. Yeah. He won't say I'll it to that, someone yeah. else. Yeah. The way I compared it, Luther is Cyclops. Diego is either a Wolverine or a Gambit type. Sure. And maybe it's just my own view. I've never liked Cyclops in the X-Men. It's the pretty boy was chosen to be the leader, kind of milk toast character. And I feel that that's kind of what Luther is. Now, he develops past that, but... That's my view of Luther, is he's very much that Cyclops kind of character. Well, I felt like in the graphic novel, he, yes, he did take control and lead much more than he did in the show. But I think that that's definitely part of the character development they did for him, because there are aspects of Luther that you know immediately in the graphic novel that they hide in the show, and then it's revealed towards the middle of the show. That's, yeah, that's true. And uh, and that's something I think that his siblings don't know that about him. And then it's revealed, and the way people think about him changes dramatically. 
Right. Oh, yeah. So right. that's when he starts second guessing himself. People are just like, oh, you're the leader just because dad said you're the leader before that reveal. And then after that reveal and their reaction to it makes him you know, not what I'm he now thought I'm I was. super self conscious yes. and yeah. Yeah. my confidence is pretty much yeah. shattered. Yeah. And what are there other things that haven't been revealed yet that could make me even less of a leader? He is a, a reluctant hero in the TV series. Right. In the graphic novel, he is a superhero and he defends the earth against annihilation. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. He is Space Boy. Space Boy. Right. So going back away from the, the characters, let's talk about the difference in how things are revealed. Again, I'm going to leave spoilers off of this for the graphic novel. We're going to assume in this that you've seen the show. But Sir Reginald Hargreaves, the father of all of them. Page three, you find out things about him that you're wondering the entirety of the series. And then they never go back to it again. <laughs> they never come back and say anything about that. Right. Mostly where he came from and how Pogo is around. Right. Page three yep. explains both of those things in the graphic novel. Is Pogo ever explained in the series? It's one of those, it's I think it's like a magazine headline or something that scrolls across. It's mm -hmm. also the, the discussion that had around Luther. That's yes, where, that's where, true. Where right, right, because Pogo's DNA, like right. the whole thing. Right. Yes, not a spoiler, but by page three of the graphic novel, it is a completely throwaway line when they're introducing Reginald Hargreaves, and all it says is, and recipient of the Nobel Prize for his work in the cerebral advancement of the chimpanzee. That's it. That's all that is in here on why Pogo is a character. So if you miss that one line, you're like, whoa, hold on. There's a monkey butler. It's not a monkey butler. He's Dr. Pogo. That's true. He is not a monkey butler. For all intents and purposes, though, in both show and comic, he's basically a monkey version of Alfred. No, I don't see that. I see that Hargreaves treated him as a colleague, not as a subordinate. And you see that with the way the children defer to Pogo. They don't treat him like an Alfred. They treat him like... He's a surrogate Yeah, father. like their uncle. Yeah. He is a parental figure to them. Let's talk about Diego. <laughs> At least they kept that consistent between the, yeah. the comic and the video. Diego's a jerk. 100%. But he's the likable jerk. He's the friend that you have that is... There are people in your life right now that if a new person comes into your life, they're like, I don't understand why you hang out with that person. Yeah, I'm that person. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not. You're not. You're but, not. <laughs> yeah, but there are people that... You mean I'm not Diego? I was you're not Diego. Diego, yeah, yeah. I mean, you might be parts of Diego. When you are when you hit a certain drink limit, 100% you are Diego. Usually about nine beers. <laughs> <laughs> if you weren't my brother, there's no way that we would deal with you because you're kind of a dick. But... but and this is something that wasn't as highlighted as much in the series as it was in the graphic novel. When the team goes to the carnival that's being attacked by killer robots, they're like flashy in front of everyone doing all this stuff. Diego is actually the one who's saving children. He's that's fair. the one yeah. who is saving the individuals, not trying to save the world. And getting yelled at for it, as I recall. Well, he also got severely injured. Yeah, yeah. In the graphic novel, I feel like his character is kind of a jerk, and he's kind of a, a loose cannon. I feel like he's much more of a loose cannon in the TV series than he is in the graphic novel. But I also feel like he is much more focused on individuals than the, the rest of the team. I'm actually going to edit my earlier statement and say Diego is either the Wolverine or the Gambit. He's the Wolverine. He really is. He's the badass super spy that goes in. If there is a Gambit in this series, it's going to be Klaus. I love Klaus. I, I love the fact that in the graphic novel, I was waiting for this part, in the graphic novel, Klaus walks in a fully developed, fully realized in all of his powers character. Mm -hmm. And... You get that development in the series. Yeah. You get to see him 
struggle. Yeah, you get to see a struggle. You get to see him take a step forward and then take two steps back. So we discussed this a little bit in the Avengers episode, in our first episode, about ultimate Tony Stark and ultimate Iron Man. Mm -hmm. And the fact that all of his nerves are, like, super aware that basically he's a walking entire brain. And the reason in Ultimate that he is an alcoholic is because he finds that alcohol will dim all of his nerves. And he gets addicted to that because he basically can function like a normal person, but he has to drink a bunch of alcohol. I found the same kind of thing with Klaus and the drug addiction and everything else, but it's the idea of not being able to deal with something and so having to use that alternative. In the graphic novel, it's like all of the character development is completely glossed over. Yeah. That's why I mentioned that the screenwriters did a good job of taking those cues that the graphic novel has. Klaus talks, there's one line where he says, well, I've, I've been on speed for three days or something like that. They take that and develop it into something that's more interesting and actually provides more depth to that character. Oh, absolutely. We've been sitting here raving about the series and the character development. I do want to step back to the graphic novel and just kind of reiterate that it, it is its own being. It, it's still a great graphic novel, but it's a great graphic novel in that kind of um, like one shot, the Goonies or maybe an Indiana Jones movie where you just take it as it rolls. We're hitting the highlights. We're keep moving. We have a specific story to tell. And we're not going to bog you down with a lot of details. We just want to take you on this ride. When the ride's over, we'll move on to the next ride. But I still think it's a great graphic novel. If the graphic novel had been paced, and keep in mind that every one of the character development things that we're talking about or whatever is pages and panels. It's more issues. It's because graphic novels are not what a company wants to sell. They want to sell individual issues. Do you think the media gets made if the graphic novel takes the pacing that the show did, did the show benefit from that allowance of extra time? Because also keep in mind, Dark Horse, which is not Marvel, it's not DC. So you're not going to get a 12-issue deal right out the gate. That's fair. And as I recall, it was the writer's first time with any comic book stuff, right? As far as I remember, yes. They may have done minor stuff, but it, it, was, it was their own idea. They're definitely not a name that I recognize. I don't think you sell as much if you pace it and develop it the way the series was. If you've got a little bit more experience under your belt or working with a company that's got more money to invest in you, maybe you're going to run something the way a Constantine or a Preacher might go. But they're two very different beasts, but I enjoyed them both. Jen? Yeah, I'm with you, Bear. I really enjoyed the graphic novel. And I think it was hard for me to, when I first started reading it, not compare it directly to the series. Oh, absolutely. It was so um, tough. 100% same. It was a fun read. I definitely would want to read more. So it wasn't Just to see how it goes. Just yeah. to find out more about... Hargreaves. Hargreaves. Yeah. Are you going to do more with this? Because now I'm confused. <laughs> the same thing comes out in the series, right? No. Much later. What? No, they never talk Where Hargreaves came from? Yeah, his wife is dying. Right, and he, and he talks and about how he's a space alien. Oh, and that's his right. His wife yes. is dying, and he talks about how their world is also dying, and that he will... He, he yeah, they spend about the same amount of time in the graphic. No, 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 no. graphic. No. This, exactly yeah. after they say that he worked in Cerebral Advancement of the Chimpanzee, the next panel just says, Space Alien, and has a panel where his face... Is like a mask that's just sitting on oh, something. Oh, over a chair, yeah. Well, and I remember the scene in the series where you saw, like, this otherworldly landscape. Right. Actually, oh, they spent a lot yeah, more time was, on how he was an alien and he came to save the world. It was, his wife was dying, his world was dying. As she died, he let lights out of a jar out the window. And then the next scene, you see this kind of weird landscape that there's stuff going on that's not good and then the next scene is him arriving fresh off the boat in the united states yeah so jen has already said her piece and i will actually have mine this time because again i read this after i watched the show but bear you would want to continue reading yeah like i said just to find out more of wtf like where <laughs> so many unanswered questions WTF, mate <laughs> totally what was the the league at the end that vanya joined up with of 
weird definitely villains. different like, yeah. different where did this stuff yeah, come from paths. like I just want to, I, I want some more backstory I'm, and I'm hoping that more pops up as i read more comics i'm not interested in reading more i'm just i want more show i really enjoy the show i actually found reading through this to kind of be a slog for me really i just wanted things to i like plot and i like to like my characters and i just didn't like anybody in this i tried to separate myself from the show but i found klaus to be a tragic figure in the show and that really didn't come across in the graphic novel and he was one of my favorite characters diego was probably my second favorite character and again in the graphic novel i just did not have the connection to him that i really had in the show the show did a much better job of making these people that i cared about which seems to be a theme i personally am not able to follow a comic book where i do not have a connection same with the show sure yeah and so you were you're more interested in the actual characters and development from the series than you right. were the where the main point of the graphic novel was just the plot right don't at me this is probably <laughs> the problem that i have with superman superman is not interesting but superman is action he has laser vision and he has freezing breath and he can fly and he's super strong and he's invulnerable and all these plots happen but at the end of the day he wasn't really interesting until he died yes i'm gonna say that over and over over and over but that's the thing my favorite incarnation of superman is smallville because in smallville kryptonite is not superman's weakness the fact that clark kent is an idiot is <laughs> superman's weakness <laughs> And you watch the show for Lex. You watch yes, the show for absolutely. the villain in that show. That's where I am. I have a real problem with action for action's sake and skipping over or glossing over plot or character development. And that's probably the English major in me. Oh, that's definitely the English major in me. All right. Final thoughts. Let's start with you, Miss Jennifer. I think that I definitely agree with you about the lack of character development and plot, that would probably be my main dislike about the graphic novel. But as we've discussed previously, my experience with comics is not as fast and as quick something to read. It was great. It was enjoyable. It was a fast read. It was everything that I want in a comic mm -hmm. it, that way. But I definitely appreciate it probably only because of the series. Fair. I'm definitely a bigger fan of the series, again, than the graphic novel. But the graphic novel, like I said, it was it was a ride. It was fun. If you don't want to invest a ton into what's going on with your characters, read it. Keep reading it. It's kind of that fun ride. You hop on, you take it for what it's worth, and then you're done with it. It's my final thought that the point of this show is to introduce people to a graphic novel if they like X from media in that way this is a great introduction to dark horse this or hellboy which we will do next season those are the comic books that i would move people towards hellboy probably more than umbrella academy but umbrella academy gets the idea of what that comic distributor wants if you don't really want your character development really spelled out and you want to kind of infer stuff but you want an action adventure things are happening every page and the story like you said moves along it's a quick read umbrella academy fits that it is a very hellboy like comic book hellboy does kind of the same thing bprd as well which was the spinoff an interesting world i thought that the series fleshed it out more and i have not read past the first graphic novels. So I don't know if maybe they took future graphic novels worth of story and everything and put it into the first season of the series and just explained it quicker because there were things in the graphic novel that were explained way quicker, but there were other things that took a lot longer to kind of understand. Sure. This has been Graphically Novel, another great episode in the can. Tune in next time when we talk about Archie and Riverdale. <laughs> old school. Yeah, we're going to go old school with this one. It's going to just be Bear and I, but we were both fans of Riverdale, the show. It's one of the only CW shows that you watch from 
what I remember. Yeah, well, a little bit of Constantine, but after it, you know, when it moved. Right, right, when it was Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. This has been Graphically Novel. We can be found on graphicallynovel.com. You can find us on Twitter at Graphically Novel. Just go ahead and use those extra two L's, by the way, so it's Graphically with two L's. And we are on the Facebook. Are you on the Facebook, Bear? Uh, maybe. Jen, are you on the Facebook? The Book of Faces? Right. Are yes. you? Yes. Excellent. So I Jen was the ahead of Hall you. Of fa- oh, wait. Sorry. Wrong, wrong TV series. Wrong thing. Yeah. They called me the face of both. Take it away, Vandello. But the same old trouble, villains always knocking at the door. Pretty pictures on the page, but nothing ever stays the same. Do, 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 do,